We're going to do a little mini series about peptides. Today is going to be basically an introduction. Welcome to this channel. I am Dr. Steven de Vos, the lifting dermatologist, and this is my partner Danny Bossa. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science based information in the world of hormone optimization, please like and subscribe. I also invite you to join my other YouTube channel, The Lifting Dermatologist. The link you can find in the description of this video. Hello everyone, welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. I'm Danny Bassa. I'm joined today with a pretty cool guest from my neck of the woods near Montreal, Jean-Francois Tremblay. How are you, Jean-Francois? I'm very good. Thank you. Great. Uh, Jean-Francois Tremblay is a student at a student researcher at the Université de Québec at Montréal. Uh, he studied exercise physiology, uh, biochemistry, and has a master's in pharmacology. Um, it just so happens that Jean-François Tremblay is one of the world leading researchers in peptides. He's been studying SARMs and peptides since the 1990s. Uh, I've wanted to do something along these lines for quite some time, but there was a, a good period that I was not allowed. And now I'm allowed, which is kind of cool considering it's my channel. And I like to learn and you guys like to learn. So uh, we're going to do a little mini series about peptides. Today is going to be basically an introduction as to what they are explained right from the beginning as if we've never heard of it. We don't know what it is. He's going to explain it, uh, a good general overview of what it is. And then we'll do another two or three videos uh, broken down to different uh, types of topics involving that. And at one point, we're going to try to organize uh, a live Q&A on, on the subject. So this will be uh, interesting information for anybody that's Looking for information about that coming straight from uh, one of the leading researchers in the world, which is very cool. Uh, and we've been talking offline in our mother tongue of uh, Quebecois. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he's got a heavy uh, Quebecois accent. Well, in uh, about 10 minutes, they'll be used to it. They'll be used to it. That's it. <laughs> so, Jean Francois, I, you're going to tell me I'm going to take everything I know about peptides and I'm going to erase it from my brain. I've never heard of a peptide. I don't know what it's from. I don't know where it's derived from. I heard of, you know, nothing about it. Okay. Share with me, what is a peptide exactly? Well, basically, it's a, it's a little chain of amino acids. Uh, if you want to have a, an idea of what it is, you have uh, proteins are made of amino acids. So when, when you eat meat or any protein, uh, that protein is broken down into uh, smaller proteins to eventually being broken down into peptides. And those peptides are then broken down into amino acids and then they can enter uh, the system, you know, through the, the, the intestine lining. So basically this is it. So it's a chain of and it has to be only amino acids, linear chains. Uh, sometimes they have ramification, ramification, but technically that makes it a protein then. But uh, there are a few exceptions. So this is it. It's, uh, we, the body produces them naturally. It is suspected that we produce close to 200,000 peptides in our body. Not that we ingest, that we do produce. Uh, there are over seven, that, that's kind of a, a guess, but identify there is over 7,000. And out of that 7,000, I don't know what percentage, small percentage, we know what they do. So many times there is a research paper coming out about a new peptide. It's not actually about the novelty of the peptide. It's more that now they found out what it does. Um, and uh, part of the research is that to take those peptides and, and say, okay, this one, what does it do in the body? Is it good? And can it be used in a therapeutic uh, application? Okay, so would this be, I'm gonna just maybe use this, you might call this a silly analogy, but if, um, you know, I get uh, protein from my steak, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. If you were just eating a lot of steak, would you be getting a lot of these peptides? Or is it kind of like 
when you're not getting enough vitamins from your food, you take a supplemental vitamin no, to have a specific no, effect because, or not even that analogy? No, because in the uh, intestine, peptides are broken down into amino acids. So yeah, you may, you, you will have some peptides, some that are totally useless in terms of uh, action. Other ones, maybe they would be, but you will break them down. And that's why actually uh, most peptides, almost all of them, uh, you cannot take them orally. They need to be injected because you take them orally, you're going to digest them like a small protein into amino acid. And then by breaking it down, it loses all activity, of course. Okay. So, so yeah. So what would be the reason why, if this is something that's made naturally or something that's derived from amino acids, whatever, it doesn't sound like anything that's really any type of synthetic chemical or, or drug in a way. What is, what's the big, the, the reason there's so much controversy around them? And, because they're injected. With, is it really just that? And, okay, no, the, the, there is many ways to answer that. One is that because we produce them naturally, they cannot be patented. Now you see where I'm going, right? So the uh, pharmaceutical industry knew about them since the beginning. They would just shut up. They would they didn't mention them, leave them alone. And there was kind of uh, an underground sub, uh, uh, underground people, not underground, but uh, how do you call that? Uh, you know, small group of people, biohackers and all that, uh, uh, that tweaked with them and had good results, but it never became mainstream. Uh, except that with the rise of the internet, well, that well, what was not mainstream suddenly became mainstream. It was, now you have all those face group groups uh, talking about peptides. Uh, you have Reddit, all those forums now, and it became very big a few years ago. And so big that actually in the US now, many, many doctors prescribe them. Uh, the FDA at this point allow there is a covered in many states in the U.S. It's investigative medicine, it's called. So there are a lot, as long as it's not prohibited by the FDA, then they can prescribe. So uh, it is not prohibited by the FDA. Uh, so now it, actually it became so big and because it cannot be patented, you know, just a little uh, parenthesis so people, they get a better view of what's happening. Uh, and probably cost a lot of money in lobbying. But now what pharmaceutical company do is they patent, well, they use before, but it's useless, but now they patent the, the peptide and its applications and they list everything that is known. So now that forces any company making peptides that sell that peptide uh, or more so if it, because a few are sold in pharmacies in the US now. Uh, so if a doctor is to prescribe that peptide for this condition, then he has to use the one that is sold by the company that has a patent for that application. So now that's how they grab the market of peptides. And now they got it, you're gonna see, uh, there are two or three already that are on the market in the US and soon you'll see them popping out. And uh, what they're doing too now, they're looking a lot into fraction of peptides because big peptides with uh, multiple uh, use, like they can be anti inflammatory, repairing and uh, uh, immune system uh, balancing in one peptide, so they break it down, they, they isolate, they say, okay, this section of the peptide does as that specific activity. And it does work, but now it's it doesn't exist naturally in the body. So now they can put a patent on that and market it as such. 
uh, obviously for the people, well, it's a huge difference, uh, uh, like very huge difference in, in prices, but that's what they do. So basically that's what happened. Uh, so is it like pretty inexpensive to make generically? And now <laughs> yeah, if you would compare, okay, th there are three levels of sales. Uh, you have the pharmaceutical one, then you would, uh, in the US, you have compounding pharmacy that do compound uh, peptides. And then you have those internet sellers that 90%, 99%, it's actually imports from China. Uh, maybe in another podcast, if there is an interest, I could talk about that. But uh, that, there is a big problem with that. Most of this company now, they're running out because of, first, because of, uh, in December, the US through a treaty with China was able to force China to stop making a lot of uh, compounds, including peptides. And that's an attempt again by Big Pharma to kind of stop the uh, generic uh, business, killing their business. Since it's more than 85% of raw material is made in China. So if they stop making it in China, making those ones in China, then they cut off the supply to the generic uh, companies. And that included peptides. So now all those companies, they're starting to have problems. Plus because of the virus right now, the coronavirus, they kind of cut off exports all in all. And first of January, they start making, but they still had stock and they were allowed to ship it out. So now they, they're not even, for now, they can even ship out the stocks. So you'll see a bunch of company being out of stock uh, indefinitely on, on products because, and company that initially they, they would be proud to claim it was made in the US. Well, they, they were not. Okay. So what am I understanding so far is it's, they're basically at, Former amino acid derived from a amino acid, but you can't ingest it because you'll break it down exactly. when you digest it. So it needs to be injected. You're saying once it's being injected, that's when a lot of people raise their eyebrows and saying, "What are you?" Yeah, and because injecting? legally, if they okay, just to show you the the difference, because it's injected, it becomes a biological compound you introduce in the body. So for the FDA and the Health Canada, that's medicinal. If they were absorbable by mouth, then that would become a food supplement. Okay. Because, so because you a, can get, let's it's say- a, uh, It's a mini protein, basically. Because you can use a vitamin B12 injectable or anything else, because the FDA has approved it, that's okay. But this exactly. one- Exactly, they say okay. for that, that's cool, but they didn't for uh, peptides. Okay. So then there's certain peptides you're saying that the larger ones can have a, a bunch of different benefits, but now that they're finding ways to cut those down even smaller to say, I just want this one little piece of this, this effect one or this effect. effect. Okay. Uh, let me give you uh, an example. Uh, you know, I, I go ahead, but there is one peptide, it's called thymosin beta-4, that uh, uh, generally was used to uh, heal uh, tissues. It's amazingly good at repairing all tissues in liver, lungs, kidneys, everything, muscle, ligaments. So at the beginning, actually, it was used mostly in sports, you know, to heal ligaments, to heal tendons. That was the well-kept secret. You know, you would see an athlete, professional athlete uh, hurt himself. And you, many times you would think, oh, that's it. It's gone for the season and he would be back in three weeks. So everybody would say, well, he has a good doctor. Yeah, he had a good doctor that knew about peptides, <laughs> <laughs> basically. And that's, it's those peptides. So this peptide is amazingly good for healing tissue, but it has other activities, uh, anti-inflammatory and for example, or uh, uh, modulating the immune system. So now they found out, they say, okay, amino acid, for example, for healing tissues, it's the section, it's amino acid 17 to 23. It's this section, you can take it out 
and you will have only the tissue repairing, uh, musculoskeletal repairing uh, of those tissues specifically. And they, they, a lot of research is done. There is that tannin peptide mm -hmm. that has an anti-inflammatory effect. But the problem with it is if you would use it in dosages that are like efficient in, as a, a systemic anti-inflammatory, well, in no time, uh, somebody white like you, uh, people would ask you if you are from uh, the India or from Africa. Uh, I was asked a couple of times in my life where I did abuse a tanning peptide if I was from India, actually. So uh, it would call for high dosages all the time and you would turn like very, very dark. So now they found out actually it's the last three amino acids of that sequence that has the anti-inflammatory effect. So now you can just synthesize the, those, uh, that little chain. You would get a very potent anti-inflammatory effect. And of course, no tanning effect, no, no other effect. So a lot of research right now is done in that direction too. So when we spoke um, by phone the other day, uh, we spoke for a, little, a good long while. You yes. told me something that really stuck out. You said, you know, you're, you're doing TRT right now and you're in this TRT group and, you know, optimizing hormones is good. Oh, yes. You said that in your view that, that optimizing, guys that want to do biohacking, if it's this, the, the, the testosterone, the TRT is like a really it's small because, piece. Because TRT is uh, many of those anti-aging clinics in the US and in the Bahamas and those places you pay fortunes to, to have therapies. Uh, they're not anti-aging. Basically they give you TRT and growth hormone replacements. Uh, the, 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 that's not anti-aging. Actually it was shown that if you have higher testosterone levels, you will live a bit less. Uh, the other extreme, if you, castrate yourself, that's the, the other like full extreme, you will live longer. You know, in nukes, uh, I've been shown to live longer. It's a question of choice, basically. But they're not anti-aging. Uh, they're healthy aging, which is very different. It's not, it's not gonna make you live longer, but it's gonna make you live healthier during those later years, which is good. And uh, that's about it. Again, it's always mixed. You know, there, you cannot take one concept and put it in a box. Because of course, if you're healthier, chances are that you will live a bit longer too, because you, know, you won't get that disease. Or mm -hmm. if you talk about testosterone and growth hormone, of course, you're gonna maintain a, a better muscle mass. So you'll be less prone to frailty. So when you're frail, that brings about its own uh, problems that, uh, you know, uh, not direct, but indirect. How many times you hear of somebody and older people, they break their hips because they, they couldn't stand them, you know, because they were frail, fall and bang, three months after they're dead because it brings about, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 it's a big break, uh, big damages, maybe need an operation. And, you know, it's, it just starts a cascade of events that makes them not live so long after that. Mm -hmm. So by, 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 by having a, a better muscle mass from maintaining testosterone levels and growth hormone, then you, you avoid that. And, and, that, and it's not nothing in, in just in Quebec. I think they are uh, estimated like billions of dollars spent uh, due to frailty in the older population. It's ridiculous. So you're saying that the, the health uh, so cares. HRT would be more living healthy, having more muscle mass, maybe having less fat, having so stronger bones, exactly. having a better quality of life. Yeah. But that peptides could could actually be more considered anti-aging. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna dump on you now what I tell 
what I say in all my conferences, it's very depressing, actually. <laughs> the day you cannot reproduce for nature, 100% nature's view. The day you cannot reproduce, you become useless for nature. Uh, and basically, we are genetically programmed to die. You know, there is no way out. Uh, actually, I was thinking about that, but it's, it's very deeply programmed because, you know, sometimes you have uh, genetic aberrations, but in the whole history of man, there is no gen, it never happened once that somehow the, the, the death gene was altered. So the person wouldn't die. So that just makes you think it's a combination of many genes. But the point is we are programmed to die. So everything, your whole biochemistry when you're young is there to build you, to make you stronger, to survive and to be able to reproduce. But as you get older, that same biochemistry driven by your genetics turns against you for you to die. So there is no way out. So uh, what I call anti-aging uh, therapies are ways to tweak with that biochemistry. You have to go at the deeper level than just take testosterone and growth hormone. Uh, you really need to tweak with that biochemistry so you push that death uh, time further and um, yeah so basically that's it you know nature they want you dead by the age of 50 and they want seven five children out of seven dead by before the age of two that's what history has shown us it's not happening anymore because antibiotics this and that but natural point of view this is it so everything that bring that higher in terms of time is are things that we do. You know, you get an infection, you take antibiotics. So now that's, you tweak with that in the sense that it's you with your brain, with your technology, you decided, okay, I'm going to do something about it. Now it can be done, uh, done in a much profound level with peptides. There are other compounds that are not peptides, but a lot can be done with peptides because they're signaling molecules. So they really work into the cells to signal pathways to do this or stop doing that. They're really at the root of what's happening bio, uh, in the biochemistry. So they're very, very potent uh, little molecules that you can now do a lot with them. So can you give us an idea of some of the things that peptides can do? Okay, well, just uh, repairing peptides. Uh, I, I had a consult uh, just before that and uh, with uh, a client and she was asking me, okay, how long will it take to repair with the peptides? I don't know. I'm not a specialist in injuries. So I told her, I said, the best to ask to is ask your doctor who I've seen hundreds of the same. So he will have a pretty good idea how long it takes. And for with those repairing peptides, I like to tell people it's easy. Whatever time it gives you, cut it in half. So if it would take two months, it's gonna take one month to repair, maybe less, depending on dosages and other things you do. So they're very, very efficient at accelerating. It may turns you into a mini Wolverine, basically. <laughs> oh, they're really, really good. And, you know, I won't go into detail more in another podcast, but they, they, they do the repair in a more organized fashion. You know, if you um, break a ligament, when it's going to repair, there's going to be kind of a scar on the ligament. You know, the fibers, the alignment, won't, it's going to be all entangled like that. As if the repair is done under the action of the peptides, the, 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 the fibers, if we could call them, of the ligaments, would be in line. So it's going to be a much cleaner repair than if you let it happen naturally. 
So it's actually a, not just a quicker repair, a better repair. It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other than uh, repair, what else? Uh, some other. Okay, if you if you want to categorize, you have uh, a peptides that I like to classify as repairing peptides. Uh, you have cosmetic peptide like that tanning peptide, melanotan, that gives you a tan, but it's still a bit of a, yeah, it's cosmetic in many ways, because uh, when when you tan, but you don't tan under the sun, like with the peptide, but even when you, sorry, when you tan under the sun, uh, the skin thickens up to three times the normal thickness. So it's a very good approach for uh, anti-wrinkles because it takes thick skin wrinkles less. That's why black people have less wrinkles than white people because they have a thicker skin because they're at the extreme of a uh, tanning, if you could say so. Uh, but it's still cosmetic and there is a whole array of cosmetic peptides like that. Uh, then you have what I like to call anti-aging peptides that are more specific to anti-aging. Uh, uh, you have therapeutic peptides now that are used in specific conditions and that can go from uh, chronic fatigue to uh, even Lyme disease, uh, if we go to the extremes, to uh, autoimmune response. Uh, uh, ALS, even neurological diseases, now very good results with uh, peptide therapies and more and more with time uh, coming. So if somebody was to, if you, you had a, uh, a menu that you could hand to somebody and say, here are all the peptides and next to this is what they do and you can pick, how many roughly peptides would be on this menu of different actions, let's say, because I'm sure maybe there's maybe a couple that do fat loss or maybe a couple that Yeah, do at this point whatever. in time, so it's like we're categories. still at less than 100, actually. It's really because, okay, you mentioned I started to uh, not research, but more got an interest in peptides back in the 90s because there wasn't that many. Actually, there was one that came out and it was a tanning peptide I got interested to then the growth uh, hormone secretagogues and uh, you know it added up so with time more and more um, but yet there aren't that many not the, uh, every week all, almost a new one pops out so it's growing very very fast but at this point there aren't that many but there are enough to uh, do a lot of things and I cannot even imagine well actually I do uh, I foresee if things go the way they should go medicine you would go see a doctor in five to ten years and uh, most of his uh, prescriptions uh, are going to be peptides and if thin things go well probably to probiotics uh, a big science is uh, developing around that the, the medicinal application of probiotics and uh, and in a few years, it's going to become mainstream as uh, medicinal applications. Those two are the, 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 the next frontier of uh, medicine. So this is kind of like the, the beginnings of, of true biohacking, if you will. Yeah. Oh, Not yeah. As close to what somebody... Because uh, a lot, uh, some of them, they actually work at the gene level. Uh, because there is another category I like to talk separately about, their bioregulator, they call, they're called. And those ones, maybe some people, they have heard about epitalon, which is uh, mostly known for its uh, anti-aging, but it's part of a class of peptide that are called bioregulators. And uh, basically, they exist in every uh, every organ or systems as its specific bioregulator. And what it will do, it will work a bit like an adaptogen. It will bring, let's say it's the one for the liver. So it will bring the liver to its optimal activity. So if something is uh, 
working too much for some reason, then it's going to bring it down. If it's not working, if it's sluggish, then it's going to bring it up. But through natural uh, biochemistry, you know, to make everything work as it should. And those ones specifically, uh, they act, they are small enough, they introduce themselves in the DNA of the cells. And depending which organ, so they will have different places where they will hook. So let's say this section is the section that there are genes that are expressing themselves in the liver. So the peptide will bind there and kind of slightly uh, make it expand a little in that zone, which will increase the expression of those genes that are specific to the liver. And so that's basically that's epigenetic to its root. You know, you directly affect the expression of the genes directly, no, nothing in between. So they're very potent too and uh, very useful. And those have been around for 50 years, actually. Uh, okay. They were discovered in Russia back in the Cold War, same as the other countries. They got a doctor, they say, find something to make our, our soldiers better and bang. I don't know, probably they were not very happy with him because, <laughs> because he didn't make super soldiers, but he found something, he found that category of peptides. And that's like 50 years ago. So it's not so, new. It's what is new is that we hear about them. Yeah, we're hearing about them more and more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A few years back, uh, all these like uh, uh, it HRT was really boards and stuff. It was actually kind of you would thing. hear, and that, that's one thing because that's a lot in the realm of biohacking, actually. And who were the modern, so to say, first biohackers? Think who, who started biohacking really? I'll tell you, bodybuilders. Oh, okay, that respect, yeah. They started first, of course, to tweak with hormones, uh, testosterone in the 50s, then the, the derivates after. So that, that's biohacking. What can you take to make your body function better? And, and some of them, had, uh, I don't want to be condescendent, but some of them are the brain and they really look into that and they say, okay, now what can we use to train better, to have better concentration? It was all around training and their sports. So what can we do to get better training? And they started to look into nootropics back in the seventies. And eventually it kind of spread out to other people or, you know, those healing peptides, you know, they get hurt. Okay, what can we take to heal faster? Because I have a competition in one month and I want to go. So they, they tweaked with all those things back then. And me, because of my background and where I was at the time, I, I did my, uh, my uh, degree in kinesiology in Ottawa. Uh, there was uh, Olympic athletes training there and powerlifting, uh, in Olympic lifting, bobsleigh, a uh, bunch of sports and bodybuilders and all that. And very soon I was introduced to uh, what was done there uh, at that level. And that's what I say. And, and then it's funny because I was only 19. Uh, there was that book that came out, uh, Life Extension. And I bought it and wow, I said, that, that's a good book. It's a, and it's still, uh, for many things, it's still very uh, up to date. And I got interested in that uh, anti-aging uh, thing because it entered tweak, you know, uh, you live better, you will live longer because what kills you at the end, it's some kind of disease. So the healthier you are, less chances are that you're gonna die younger than you're supposed to. Because that's another concept you have to keep in mind. You know, I said we're genetically programmed to die, but I've, uh, I believe that overall we're genetically programmed to die around the age of 120. Uh, it's even biblical actually. But what I mean is you look now, there are 
more, probably not more, but the population is bigger. So yes, there are more people. And again, because of internet, we hear more about them. Uh, the, that's about, you know, 111, 117. You know, they rotate under 120. I think so far, very few past 120 and not much. So it seems that, yeah, that's the top age that the deep uh, programming is set to. So basically what you do by tweaking with the biochemistry, by having a good diet, by uh, optimizing your hormones, by doing exercise, everything, you, 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 you don't add years to how long you're supposed to live. That's program. You just, you just don't take years away. You're born with 120 years. Now, everything you will do either will make you go close to that or will take years away. So contamination, bad uh, hygiene, sleep hygiene, you know, everything you can throw in there. If you don't respect those things, then you take years away. But when you're born, well, not today, because you know that any baby born today is already born with 200 and more um, polluent in his blood than he got from the mother. So we're a bit fucked for that. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, you, you understand the idea, no? So, and, and again, all that is done by, by tweaking uh, the best we can uh, with what we have. And at this point, I believe most of it is from peptides. Got it. So are they considered, uh, you know, if somebody's watching this video and says, oh, I want to, you know, I want to get some peptides. Is it, is it a, a league? Is it legal to buy and, and, and have? Or it depends it where it is. Buy and have? Is it something only a doctor can prescribe? <laughs> it depends where you live. Most of those internet companies, including mine, we sell them as research compounds. So that's not a national law, that's an international agreement. That's why they didn't take it off. That allow university research centers or even individual to buy compounds under that classification and officially do research. Now, once they got them as an individual, what they do with it, it's up to them. So legally, we can sell them as research compounds. Uh, what you do with it after, that's all up to you and nobody's gonna knock at your door to find out what you're doing with them. So uh, they are in that gray zone. Uh, for that internal market. If you're in the US, a lot of doctors now prescribe them. They're sold through uh, compounding pharmacies. They're more expensive, but yeah. And soon through pharmacies. So it's still a gray zone where it's still uh, permitted and allowed. Who knows in two years, in five years, but for now it, it can be done this way. Uh, Earlier, you mentioned uh, China, saying yeah. you know, some of them are coming in from China. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that you meant that the stuff coming from there isn't really that great quality. Like where? Well, China, where... I've been known to be, uh, if they can pass a fast one, they will. Let me give you an example. Uh, when growth hormone was synthesized, not extracted from the uh, the glands, then China started to synthesize growth hormone. But there is one company in particular back then, what they did is, that that's pretty extreme, but that's the kind of things that you could expect only from China. So uh, they started to sell growth hormone the best quality you can get. So people were using it and it was like, wow, and one of the effects you get to growth hormone that it's uh, telltale that it's, you have the right stuff uh, is you'll develop uh, the, um, 
you know that syndrome in the carpal wrist? tunnel syndrome yeah you'll develop that and if you take higher dosages pretty fast so people were getting that syndrome very fast because it was good and after a few months they switched the growth hormone for a drug i don't remember the name of what it is that has nothing to do with growth hormone was a lot cheaper but had a side effect that it would give you the, the, the carpal tunnel syndrome so people for a couple of years they continue to use it and say no it must be good i get that carpal tunnel inflammation and one day somebody decided to analyze it and they say no there's no growth hormone in there there is this uh, what they will do there is a study that came out not so long ago five six years ago where in uh, one of those scandinavian uh, countries they ordered uh, from different internet company uh, melanotan that tanning peptide and they analyzed them and the purity was ranging to very high quality to not so high but what was consistent in from all the vials is that they were all sold as containing 10 milligrams and systematically they contain five. So they were selling you five for the price of 10. But that's when uh, you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes true. So you use it and eventually, yes, you will get a tan and it's gonna take this time. Your friend is using from another company, the same kind of results. Uh, and so, you know, that lie became truth. Okay, the standard that, yeah, okay, it's good. Uh, and they, they don't expect people like you buy peptides. Are you going to go to a lab to have it? And it's going to cost you like 10 times what it costs you to buy the peptide to have it analyzed. And it comes down to nobody does it. So, and they counted on that. So they say, okay, because there is a visual effect, we have to put the real stuff in there, but you know, have those, they will get a tan eventually and everybody's gonna be happy. Uh, another thing they will do it's in the process of uh, making it. Meaning when we make it in the lab, we stick, uh, I'll skip the details, but basically we, we hook one amino acid to the next to complete the chain, right? But at every step, there are amino acids that don't hook up to the first one or the, you know, so they will float around. So if it's properly done, that's the way we do it anyway, at every step we uh, analyze, we do HPLC to see the percentage and then we clean it. So at every time you start from a hundred percent percentage, why? Because if you leave those free amino acids floating, then they will hook up later where they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. So let's say at the fifth amino acid uh, in the sequence, uh, glycine is supposed to go there, but you add some tryptophan floating around. So the tryptophan will take the place of the glycine and, and you will build that, that one chain on that tryptophan instead of glycine. So at the end, your peptide won't be active because it's, it's, its activity is based on the, 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 the perfect sequence for that peptide. But because it's all made up of the same amino acids, when you will test it, so because some people do that, they order bulk from China and then test it on the HPLC and it shows a high percentage. But let's say it shows 98%, but maybe 8% is denaturated peptide. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be the same weight because at the end it's all the same uh, amino acids you have been using. So the HPLC doesn't tell you which amino acid tells you, it gives you the weight of the molecule, which is very specific. But since you build it with the same amino acid, but they are not at the right place, you may have a high percentage of the peptide that won't be active. So that's a lower quality and there is no way, no cheap way to test for that.
So they know nobody does it. So they say, hey, let's skip those steps. It's going to make the production much cheaper. And that's what happened. You get them very cheap there. But what happened? You'll get a batch working. The next batch is not working so well. You get those variations <coughs> in results. And more so today when you work with... Uh, with medical application, you don't want that kind of variations. So you would think a, that they wouldn't want to send you something that's 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 crap. Well, it's say, not oh, this is totally crap. I'm not going to buy crap. from them anymore, right? No. Well, you know what happened in China? They don't care because let's say you buy from the internet company, because in China there isn't like a hundred companies that make peptides in China and it's government regulated. So there are maybe two companies that sensitize peptides in China. So, and they, there, it was assigned by the government. They say, you and you, you make this, you, you make this. As anybody who has been to China or heard about it, you know, it's all by areas. You have a, a biochemistry area, you have a technological area, you know, there are provinces that are dedicated to industries and each within the industry what each company does it's government assigned so there is only one or two that mass produce and then if you go on alibaba you will find a hundred ah, that they're resellers they exist as a company only on the internet it's actually a guy in front of his computer so the company makes i don't know um a hundred thousand vials of one peptide. So uh, they are gonna call those resellers and say, okay, we just made a hundred thousand. How many do I keep for you? How many for you? And now they will go sell. So you will have company X in the US buying from this revendor and company Y in the US buying from this revendor. But at the end, they all come from the same place. Hence, when they bought from 15 different companies, systematically, they were at five milligrams because they're bottled there. So, you know, it's at the source. It And there was one source for melanotan. It was sold at five. Maybe the revendor doesn't know that. For sure, the guy in the U.S. doesn't. But it goes that far, you know, somebody did it, but there are no reason to tell the next guy down the line, but they do that. And why China has a reputation of selling cheap stuff, not only chemicals, because if they have a chance to make something cheaper by cutting corners, they will. That's what they do. It's in their genes, I guess. <laughs> uh, so that's the thing. That floating thing that they don't have control. So sometimes they'll be lucky and the quality will be a bit higher. Sometimes it's going to be lower. Mm -hmm. So you're going to buy a peptide from a, a company in the US and they bought maybe six months ago. So it was a batch. This other company just bought a new, uh, the same uh, peptide. It's a newer batch. Luckily, this one worked better. So you'll hear, oh, no, this company is better. This company, no. They were just lucky at this time. And maybe the next time they buy, they won't get the same results. And they won't. I've seen it because before we started, that's one of the reasons why I started this company because I was a bit tired of that. You know, sometimes it works. And I was buying straight from China before. I never bought through those companies. And I know what are their prices. I know how they work and prices change up and down. But, you know, it's between competition, between vendors. They say, okay, I will sell this one more, but this one less. At the end, they all make about the same money. That's why all those companies, they all sell pretty much the same array of peptides and the same uh, dosages. And, and they all have those colored cap. That's a, that's a telltale sign of red cap, pink cap, blue cap. So us to differentiate for that, we only have white caps. So, you know, so just to make a bit of difference at that level. There was something you told me before when you were talking about HG, HGH and I, I started laughing and saying, mm. I bought some HGH online mm. uh, that was 
obviously it wasn't it wasn't prescription, but it, mm. uh, it, it, I looked it up and they said it was pretty good on some of the forms I went to go. So I got two months supply, mm. and I didn't take a ton of it. And I tried it for two months, and after two months, I was like, my sleep isn't improved physically. I feel the same. I look the same. This it's like I might as well just be drinking a glass of air. But I had carpal tunnel. And I, just, and I didn't know that that had an effect, carpal tunnel. Uh, and at one point, my wife says, could it be your HGH that you're taking? I said, well, well why would HGH uh, cause that? I thought it was silly. And she was, it's the only thing you changed. Uh, so I stopped taking it. I threw the rest out because I was fed up. It wasn't doing anything. And my carpal tunnel went away. And now I'm wondering if I got a batch of something maybe. that wasn't HGH that just gave well, yeah, me Yeah, it could have been tunnel. because they have done it. That wouldn't be the first time, you know? Unbelievable. It's it's crazy. I'm telling you. Uh, that's why when I realized all that, you know, I approached uh, eminent biochemist, uh, strike of luck. We started a company, and uh, and bang, it's it's good because people they they see it, they realize. Now, okay, just to give you an example about melanotan. When you start to use melanotan, the first few doses, you'll have a bit of a upset stomach. And if you take too much, actually, you're gonna throw up. So uh, it's not, it's just after a few days, it goes away or what you do, you start at smaller dosages. And I had people who used melanotan for years and, uh, but underdosed. And when they tried mine, they took, what they thought was the right dose and they threw up and they never threw, threw it up before <laughs> because mine was pr about twice more, more, more concentrated. And you know, they, they said, whoa. I said, yeah, that, because now you're re getting the right dosage. And you, Would you say that, that, let's say if we're gonna use HGH we're talking about, is there a benefit to using peptides over HGH? Do you think that yes. peptides can pretty much do everything HGH can do? There are a, a, a series of peptides that make you release your own growth hormone. And for uh, optimizing growth hormone, that's enough. You know, you're not talking, you don't need supra physiological levels uh, because the, the pituitary gland, unless there is a malfunction uh, of the gland, it still can produce full amount of growth hormone until the day you die. You're 90 years old. The reason it doesn't, that, that the levels are, are dropping, it's the stimulation of the pituitary is not there anymore. So now there are peptides that replace, that may provoke that stimulation. And one injection, five, 10 minutes, and you have peaks that, and if you combine them, peaks that you probably never had in your life, higher. And, and in terms of uh, I use, it matches uh, one to I use uh, a day, which is a normal uh, uh, hormonal replacement therapy. So no problem with an advantage. Okay, when you work with growth hormone, you're looking at two effects. The, uh, the actual effect of the growth hormone that it has on pretty much every tissue in the body bone, muscle, liver, everywhere, brain, kidneys. Uh, th there are receptors for growth hormone pretty much everywhere in your body, like for testosterone. Uh, but then if it's taken at the right time, meaning when your uh, uh, glycemia is low, then it will stimulate the production by the liver of IGF-1 which two has different receptors all over your body with a bit different activities. So now when you inject growth hormone, you have the direct effect of the growth hormone and the indirect effect of the IGF-1. When you take a peptide, those growth hormone releasing uh, peptide and the growth hormone releasing hormone, it's two in another podcast, I explained the difference, but you use them together and it's like one plus one equal five. Uh, those peptides actually have their own receptors 
all over the body because they're uh, they're derivates of the ghrelin hormone. You know, the hunger appetite, but mm -hmm. that has much more. It turns out that the the ghrelin and the growth hormone releasing hormone are very similar. Uh, eventually, they have better categories where the uh, you, you cut off that hunger effect, but you keep the growth hormone stimulation. Uh, but you have receptors for that actual peptide all over the body. So now you add a third layer of positive effect that you don't get when you inject peptides. So it's even better using the peptides to release your own growth hormone. And it is a lot cheaper. Oh, cheap so. is good. <laughs> which is why I ordered the generic. Usually, usually yeah. it's good. Cool. So uh, that's why if it's for uh, hormonal replacement therapy, uh, healthy aging therapy, go for the peptides. Uh, you, you'll win on the, all fronts uh, awesome. with that. So we're going to do some other videos then where we can do maybe more of a deep dive into, let's say, uh, peptides for repair. Uh, I would imagine some of the strategies that people can use of course the peptides on the cosmetic side maybe it's for you know you want to get a, a more of a tan or you want to do fat loss or you want to do whatever other well we'll we'll talk areas. then but there is a, a a very sick effect side effect from those tanning peptides remind me to tell you about it i did I, i'm supposed to print that and i've never heard of peptides but i have one friend of mine that tried the melatonin and he told yeah. me that uh, his little friend downstairs was like this for uh, a few it's days. It's <laughs> pretty much the strongest thing you can do for that. Unreal. By far. Without side effects and we have time. I'm sure just because I time. talk of that you're going to get your <laughs> triple your listeners for next time. Okay. It's like a turbo Cialis on, uh, on uh, uh, turbocharged. There is a bunch of receptors in the brain. They're called melanocortic receptors. And MSH, melanotan is a derivative of uh, MSH1. Uh, it's melatonin stimulating hormone. But as I told you, it too has anti-inflammatory activities and all that. So anyway, the effect is in the brain. It's not local. And it turns out that it stimulates how it stimulates down there, I don't know. But it's not a local effect. It's through the primitive brain. And uh, so you get, can I say it, ridiculous erections with that. Uh, but more than that, it increases the actual libido uh, to the degree that... Uh, as men, and I assume women too, because I've seen them when I was younger, you know, you're, you're 17, 18, and you got that drive. that drive. You need to go out and, you know, it's, you need a girl. And you don't care, even if it's the fat, ugly one. You know, <laughs> sometimes, you, hey, bang. You, you know that drive that you cannot resist, it comes back when you use melanotan. And it increases the uh, the orgasm. It, it's it's better. So you win at all levels with that. And now there is a derivative of melanotan PT141 that has all those effects without the tanning. Because again, when I told you if I was asked if I was Indian, well, I I, I wasn't doing it for the tanning. <laughs> <laughs> and I took too much. So now there is a variant of it that doesn't make you tan, or it does slightly. You would have to take tons of it to, to tan uh, beyond uh, reasonable. And you get those effects. And actually, it's not on, it's one of those few peptides that is on the pharmaceutical market. And it's actually mar market to, uh, toward women because it increases their libido and orgasm and everything like ridiculous. And is this something just uh, because we're on the subject, something you take kind of like a sh short term over a period of weeks and you have to stop or is it something you can take long term? It depends. It... Why, why for tanning? 
Well, either or, let's say. Okay, well, no. Uh, basically, you you would, like anything else, you would time your things. You know, if you would go, if you know that you're going to some seminary somewhere and uh, I would assume that, you know, you're, <laughs> you're going to be, you know, that's it. You know, no, no sexual activities. Then, you know, you don't take it. Otherwise, you just would be, make everything much harder. But, you much know, <laughs> you know, it's Friday. And, it makes everything uh, much harder if you take uh, it. You're pretty sure that you're going to get lucky that day. Then, yeah, you take it. Or, you know, you're married and, you know, you know, okay. Uh, those things can be decided. It's the equivalent okay. of taking a Cialis or exactly. a Exactly, basically. Like the, It'll the have same, a duration uh, for... Okay. Yeah, except the duration, well, it can be pretty long. Some people, it, that, that's more individual. The offset is long. Uh, for some people, it may take up to 12 hours to kick in. But when it kicks in, they know. And, and the effect can last anything from 16 to uh, 48 hours after. Uh, again, that's individual. You know, you have to tweak a bit and learn. And basically knowing the offset time and everything, then you know when to get your shot. And so you, you know when you'll be ready and for how long and everything. Hmm. It, it's, it's actually very popular. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you take it and then bang, it literally bang. Yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, it's very impressive, and and people that Viagra, Cialis, all those didn't work, they take those and they work. Well, the the difference is is with Cialis and, and Viagra in particular. Um, I've tried Cialis. I've never tried Viagra, but mm. Viagra, you're just up. Whether you like it or not, you're just yeah, up. You could there. have no libido when it it's there. Kind, kind of headaches and yeah. uh, and 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 again, it doesn't work for everybody. There is a percentage of people. There is no amount of Viagra they can take. It's not gonna work. And the melanotan or the PT one four one will work. There is a percentage of people. It's not gonna work at the beginning. So what you have to do is kind of teach the body. So you do it for a couple of weeks and suddenly, bang, it's going to work. And afterward, it's going to work as you expect. But some people, they need some kind of, to train the body to the peptide. I don't know. I once heard that analogy with uh, smoking weed. That some um, people, they have to smoke it a couple of times and nothing happens. Yeah, and one time they smoke uh, yeah, it yeah. and then they're... Uh, yeah, and then yeah. they're good. You know, next time yeah. they're good. Yeah, for a small percentage of people, but eventually it will work 100%. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so, so we know what our next videos are going to be about because I'm going to get a lot of questions <laughs> on this for sure. <laughs> so peptides for uh, cosmetics... Peptides for uh, tanning, peptides for fat loss, peptides for well, prehistoric uh, uh, Tyrannosaurus you know, rex sex. Since <laughs> you work with uh, hormonal, mainly with hormonal replacement therapy, I suspect that, you know, that healthy aging aspect, anti-aging, uh, a lot of people will be interested in that. But yeah, I'm sure when you get into it, uh, and what I love about working with peptides is that they don't have side effects. You know, nobody's gonna call you at four in the morning, hey, I'm uh, at the, the emergency. No, uh, they're pretty much side effect free. Not that you have to be careless about it. There are considerations to be taken, but generally nothing to worry about uh, side effects or bad effects or things like that and uh, awesome yeah, they're pretty good things um how would people reach you if they watch this video and they say i gotta talk to this guy how do they could someone go about reaching okay. you? either for for a talk for uh, if uh, on, on, on 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 uh, facebook uh can lab c-a-n-l-b as a page where you know, they can write, I'm the one answering the messages. Uh, but usually I, I mostly answer messages related to the company. 
uh, not like because sometimes the people they ask me questions that would require a, a book chapter, and you know I just don't have time for that. But usually, and for your listener, if they ask me questions that require short answers, then I will. But don't expect too much explanation because then that's where the book chapter comes in. But usually, if the answer could be yes, no, maybe, I don't know, I will answer. Uh, if it's a sh sh question, because I had, had people writing me and, you know, they, like they lay out their, con I'm this, and I have this, and bang, that, that would take like an hour to answer. And I just don't have time for that. Yeah. But, you know, general question, uh, I have this, would that be good for me? Yeah, sure. You know, now I would look more into this, you know. Uh, I try more to educate people so they don't need to ask those questions. That's why I do a lot of podcasts. I'm not much of a writer. Uh, so uh, on that Facebook page, I, have a, uh, I write sometimes short things that I find uh, pertinent at the time. Uh, and I'm interacting in a few peptide groups, but the main one, I'm very active. And if people want to join it as an extra group, uh, and what I do in that particular groups, I do a, a, a podcast twice a month, roughly, where I kind of answer, you know, I let question gather up or mm -hmm. I see the overall direction of the questioning in the group. And then in a, instead of writing 10 times to, on different posts, then I make a podcast and I answer those questions or I talk about uh, what I feel is a, a general topic that is unclear to most people. So the group, it's biohacking, superhuman performance. I didn't come up with the name, but a good <laughs> friend of mine in Toronto is managing it and you know, there you, they can find more podcasts where I, I'm, I'm, I'm much more specific. I may talk about one peptide for an hour, you know, what it does, why it does, and why people say this, because there are a lot of misconceptions too in mm -hmm. that word. And I, I try to clear that up too. Uh, so that, that's a good group. And then uh, uh, in your group, I'll be there too. So, you know, Again, yeah, I'll send you an invite. Sure. Uh, as long as uh, you know the quest, the, the answer doesn't require me to write for half an hour. But you know, uh, I'll, I'll just see. Usually, people, you know, they ask the questions, and and sometimes I see another member. The the answer is correct, so I don't need to. Just, so I will just like the answer, and that's like my my okay. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> not nothing to add to because I I don't. Uh, pretend to uh, own the uh, the uh, all the knowledge on it you know well, this is people. kind of the reason why I do these videos is somebody will ask a question in the group and I'll be like oh yeah I did a video about that with this person I'm like here watch this and I just send yeah. them the link and and go there and you go you know and and actually can lab as I, I uh, they are not all there but if they go on YouTube the can lab channel there is already a couple of those uh, little podcast I've made in that group. So I do them for that group, but then, you know, I put them on the CAD, uh, YouTube uh, channel of Can Labs, so they can go there. And uh, yeah, a true podcast and well, conferences sometimes, you know, I try to educate people and uh, uh, best I can. Yeah. Cool. So guys, our group, in case you're wondering, it's the same name as the YouTube channel, TRT and Hormone Optimization. So I'm going to send them an invite. Um, so again, this is just, this was really meant to be an intro. Yeah, we touched on a whole bunch of different things, uh, but we're going to try to do another uh, two or three where we're going to go in depth on some more specific subjects uh, in a lot more detail. And like I said, have a uh, live uh, Q&A. So I can get a bunch of questions from the Facebook group and then I also have people in the YouTube chat, you know, putting questions up in real time to ask. Um, so if you know, just to make sure you guys don't miss these videos, click subscribe, like the video if you liked it, click that notification bell so you'll find out. 
And then when these videos come out, you'll you'll know about them right away. You won't miss it. Mm. Oh, and and two in groups because some people they steer their questions to become a private consultation, basically, mm -hmm. you know. And then I I don't I I do private consultation and it's part of my living, and I charge for those. Uh, you know, I'm not pushing it right now, but just to tell if somebody would ever be interested to go deeper specifically for them, you know, a specific case, specific, then they can just go through a private consult and we go the as deep as we can go specifically for the person I consult with. So, and I and don't like to do through the CanLab uh, Facebook page for that? Uh, yeah, or, or yeah, they, they can buy them through the CanLab.net. Uh, That's our web page, which is uh, simpler that, than that. You cannot find. You know, people, they get there, you know, no pictures. It's like a very simple page, but uh, it serves its purpose. Uh, because the problem with that, too, to be too specific to one person in a group, Many people, because many times it's actually therapeutic, but if I start to give too precise of advice for this person, other people of the group won't use it as an educative tool, but they'll just do a copy and paste to them or to other people. And that might not be the best of idea. So that's why I have to be careful for that too, for the sake of, of people because uh, what uh, I, I could suggest for you for a specific condition might not be the best for the next guy and I don't want people to fall into that I really want people to learn that eventually they can come to the right uh, to the right what they should do Mm -hmm. uh, without consulting, you know, they know enough, they understood the whole thing. And at the beginning, it's very complicated. Of course, it's new, but as I told you, peptides, there isn't like 2,000 at this point. You know, there's a, uh, a few dozens that are actually being used. So eventually, you kind of get a grasp of what does what and how to use. And uh, so. Gotcha. Jean-François, je te remercie euh, beaucoup euh, d'avoir fait ça aujourd'hui. C'était euh, assez intéressant. Puis euh, j'ai hâte de faire les autres vidéos. So, guys, um, that's about it for today. Make sure you uh, stay tuned in for our, the, the next ones coming out. I'll be bugging uh, Jean-François on a very often basis until we get him on and get into the next one. I'm around. That's it. <laughs> You're around. Okay, thank you very much. Very welcome. Talk to you soon.